and welcome to Tech24 with me, Rebecca Bowering. Coming up in the programme, the Chinese go it alone building a supercomputer made solely of homegrown chips. So can Beijing cast off its reputation of technology thief? And what does this innovation drive mean for the West? Out of the asylum and into Arkham City, we joust with the Joker and cavort with Catwoman in Rocksteady's brand new Batman video game. In 2010, China shocked the IT world by building the fastest supercomputer on the planet with a little bit of help from Intel. This time around, they've decided to go it alone. The brand new Sunway machine uses only Chinese-designed chips. Let's take a look with our correspondents in Beijing. The beating heart of Chinese supercomputing, the processors driving the newly unveiled Sunway Blue Light MPP, built from nearly 9,000 chips like this one, China's new number crunching champion is able to perform 1 million billion calculations per second using 75% less energy than its rivals. American and Japanese supercomputers take up a lot more space, but ours needs relatively little, just 100 square meters. That's because we're able to install many more chips in each part of the supercomputer. Another innovation is the water-driven cooling system, which could open up the way for the next generation of supercomputers, not just for China, but the rest of the world as well. It's got applications in many fields, such as meteorology and oceanography. It's likely that Chinese PC makers will take advantage of the newly designed chips, However, China still has a long way to go before its processors are able to compete with better-known brands. Intel, AMD and above all IBM processors still dominate the global market. And this new Chinese processor won't make much of a dent in that domination. China is catching up fast, though, and is now a serious contender in the race to develop an exaflop supercomputer, a machine a thousand times more powerful than the current generation of supercomputers. Well, my guest in the studio this week is Mark Edwards, television presenter and, uh, well, I've got to say, give video games aficionado, as we'll see later <laughs> I enjoy on. enjoy the video games. Yeah. And uh, recently back from China. So thank That's you very correct. much for being with us. The uh, Sunway supercomputer isn't even amongst the top ten fastest in the world, but it's still a big deal. So why is that? Well, at the end of the day, in 2010, China managed to create the fastest supercomputer in the world but using um, bits from other countries. But this time, they've done it themselves. And if anything, it shows that it's a gradual progression there. They're really, they're moving forwards in terms of uh, technological innovations. And uh, if anything, I think it might mean uh, some uh, cheap chips from China for, for the rest of us, certainly in terms of the fact that if the quality is good enough, then hopefully that benefit will come to the end user. So it could be great for competition. But the Chinese do have this reputation for borrowing technology from elsewhere, sometimes doing it better, certainly doing it cheaper. I'm thinking maybe of the bullet train, for instance. Um, yes, they, they have got that reputation, but historically that's what's always gone. It goes in roundabouts. If you think about it, you know, we're talking in the last couple of centuries, we had Chinese came up with um, gunpowder or the printing press, didn't really capitalise on that. And then the West came in and they really made, uh, made something out of it. So so if anything goes round in roundabouts, but of course the unfortunate episode with uh, the 40 people who died in, uh, in, the, uh, in the bullet train some time crash can sometimes show that uh, you can try and be too quick uh, and you, you, know, you really should be able to walk before you can run. I think, sometimes health and safety suffers as a result. Let's talk about another giant leap forward that China's been trying to make and that's in the space race, of course. We had the first space kiss in the country's history between the Tiangong-1 space station module and the Shenzhou-8 craft. Now, why is it so important to China to have a rival to the International Space Station? Well, I think it's a chance for China to, to, to make this symbol, to show we can put a guy up in space. You know, we are now, we're become, re-becoming one of the great superpowers. And this is, this is our ticket. This is to show the world and to show the Chinese people as well that they have these capabilities, uh, which can then obviously move into, um, you know, you've got aerospace and the technology on that, on that side can then be translated towards um, car manufacturing or, or lots of different areas. And, uh, and it really is, it's a symbol for, uh, for the Chinese. Thanks for that, Mark. Stay with us. Test 24 is next.
Well, Tech 24's guest this week, Mark Edwards, was a special guest at Warner Brothers Paris headquarters this week. They're the editors of the Batman video game series. And Mark, you got to test out the latest instalment, didn't you, which is I... Arkham City. Yeah. What did you think of that? Um, I, in, in all truth, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic game. Uh, the main thing to take out of it is how immersive it is. You know, if you draw the blinds, get it up on the big screen, you, you, you can feel uh, like you're Batman for a bit, uh, so really escaping reality in quite quite some way. But it's uh, it's beautifully drawn. The graphics are incredible. Um, you can even have it in 3D actually, so uh, that can really drop you right into this universe or the Arkhamverse, uh, as the editors like to call it. And, and that 3D idea was was central actually to the whole concept. It wasn't something they bolted on afterwards. No, exactly. Um, it's something, and, and, it's, and it's clear to see. You know, it's not. It's a bit like Avatar. They had they they filmed it with 3D in mind rather than doing it in post production. And this is what they've got here. And you can tell because it, the kind of motion that you have, the flying over the city, and all that, all those uh, sort of little astuce, these little great tricks that they've got in there, really help to give it. This incredible experience. And you were saying it was even good for beginners because Batman's actually very easy to manipulate. I don't think you really you need to know that much about Batman. They teach you a lot of about the characters along the way. So it's great for those who love Batman, those who have no idea and who just want a good game. Actually. And you can also play missions within the game as well. It's not necessarily the plot driven form that you have to play. Exactly. You can you, you can follow the plot and there's and that's great fun because you're following, you know, you're watching a film, if anything. But then you can also, you know, you can go besides that and follow and and go around these different smaller type missions where you are visiting the entire universe and meeting these different characters and, and also uh, you're incorporating different characters where you can become Catwoman, you can download uh, the ability to play as Robin. So uh, there's a lot of things to keep you gaming for a long time on that. And this game is a sequel to the 2009 Arkham Asylum yeah. uh, title and it was Paul Dini who wrote the Batman TV series uh, back in the 90s who also scripted this. So we can see that of course a comic book goes well onto the television. Do you think this is a transition that it works equally well in terms of a gaming environment? I think especially, I think the fact that you've got a big studio behind it, they've got the licenses, they've got the ability to uh, to give these, this great storyline. You've got these big action sequences, even when you're fighting, uh, you know, you've got 40 characters all fighting at once. It's it's very cinematographic, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a visual feast. So no need to rent the DVD, as it were. And the game's been out for Xbox 360 and PlayStation since uh, mid-October here in France. It's coming out for PC uh, this week. But if you've got a Wii, then you're going to have to wait until 2012. It costs 70 euros. Do you think that's a good buy? Uh, I think it will, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. You'll really get a lot of enjoyment out of it. A good, good, good 20, 25 hours of gaming and a whole weekend all yours would be great. I hope to join you for that then, Mark. Thank you very much for coming in <laughs> to the Tech24 studio. And thank you to you for watching this edition of the programme. Don't forget to find us on the social network. It's facebook.com forward slash Tech24. Finally, a well-known clothes retailer, an international retailer, is using the slogan Unhate to drum up some new business for itself. Benjamin Netanyahu kissing Mahmoud Abbas and the Pope embracing an imam are just some of the images used by this controversial ad campaign. The latter has now been withdrawn. Banners were unfurled last week in Paris, as you can see here, and other cities around the world. Promoting tolerance or just causing a stir? Up to you to decide. See you again next week.